continues today. Today, we talk about our focus. The focus that we have in our lives, we should have, we should strive for. Focus that we should have, instead of focusing on the objects or our desire, the focus that we should have towards our provider, towards our God. The focus that we have while we wait for God, while we wait for Him to come back to us, while we wait for Him to show us that next opportunity that we may have in our Christianity, in our lives, to, to grow and to reach out. This Friday, my focus uh, was in a different place than usual. I'm a very routine person. I do certain things at certain times. Now, granted, in the ministry, you can get pulled in a number of different directions, sometimes in a thousand different directions, does that sound familiar to anybody else? It's not just ministry, is it? It's life in general today. But, but I also get very routine. There's certain things that I've tried to do on certain days. And Friday was a little bit different because Friday my focus was on my son. Who was having, I don't know, like 20 teeth pulled. <clears throat> it was actually eight. Right? And, and our family, our focus that day was on him and the procedure that was going to be going through and the braces that are soon around the corner. And Levi, there's nothing to be afraid of, buddy. You can talk to a lot of these kids in here that have gone through some of that same type of thing. But that's where our focus was. That's where our concern was. And of course, later that night, my, me and Amy were still concerned. And Levi's jumping around being his normal self. Because kids are resilient. And the next day, we're still trying to say, now, slow down, Levi. Slow down as he wants to wrestle and do the things that we typically do on a normal day. But really, the whole time, our focus needs to remain on God. Our faith. If we focus on Him first in our lives, we're going to find that so many other things fall into place. Thank you so much for the prayers for Levi. And look, he's, he's out here passing out bulletins today. I, uh, I'm proud of you, son. You're tougher than I would be, for sure. I, I had my wisdom teeth cut out, and I, I, I wind him up for three months. <laughs> Don't shake your head, yes. <laughs> but we're multitaskers in today's world we find ourselves being pulled in a hundred different directions at all times. Sometimes we're rushing from one thing to do the next thing, and the whole time we find ourselves with our phones in our hand. I was watching a basketball game the other day, and they kind of panned over the crowd, and some were cheering, some were texting, some were probably checking out some stats all on our little mobile devices. If you go to a kid's game, you'll oftentimes see parents at soccer, for example, they've got their lawn chairs out, they're cheering for their kids, and they've got their cell phones in hand. And then when the game's over, they fold up the chairs, put the cell phones up, head to the car, and get ready to go to the next thing. All thinking about how we can make it work. So I have to ask, where is our focus in life? Look, I'm not saying that those things are bad. That's just kind of how it is nowadays. You're getting pulled in a number of different directions. But our focus must remain the same. It must remain about our faith, about our God. And when it does, we're going to find things so much easier. Last week we said, it's not about you, or me, or us as individuals. It's about serving God. Well, part of the problem with that, that we have in our society today, about making it all me-focused, part of the problem with that is that we focus, like I've already said, on that object, that desire, instead of... Our provider, God. So I have to ask you, where is your focus? Where is it? Psalm 62, 5 through 6. Really, 62, 5 through 8 would be good. Let's just read these verses. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, where I will not be shaken. We're talking about David. We're talking about David who is in hiding who is afraid for his life. But yet still, what is he saying? I wait quietly before God. I'm putting my hope in Him. He's saying that God is where He needs to go and where He needs to focus in His life. Because that's where He won't be shaken. That is what must not be moved or must not be changed. His faith in God. And verse 7 is going to go on to talk about His victory and the victory that we only receive through Christ Jesus our Lord. So what are we going to do then? Where are we going to look at our focus? First, let's, fo let's look at our focus on our daily needs. Matthew chapter 8, verse 18 through 20. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, 
Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. You ever had those attitudes over your life? You're like, I'm going to follow you wherever you go until it's inconvenient for me. I'm going to be a Christian, everyday Christian, every day until it's not the most cool thing to do or until I want to do something that involves sin or until I don't want to be that committed. Folks, we got to be an everyday Christian every day. But when we look at the daily needs that we have, and when we focus on those in our lives, when we say, I'm going to focus on these things, these now responsibilities, if you will, these are the responsibilities that each of us have every single day. Life, family, and work. Yeah, you do. And we'll elaborate on that just a little bit. But our life, our family, and our work are now responsibilities. These three areas are places that we strive for a peace of mind. We want to know that these three areas are taken care of, are okay. That my life, my family, and my work, those things are good. Are now responsibilities, right now. And oftentimes we can find our focus being shifted from life to family to work to family to life to work to family all over the place. Listen, I know I'm that way. I gotta really try to get something off my mind before I can go to the next thing, because if I don't, my brain's going a thousand different directions. And if you know me personally, you know that I am not bluffing about that at all. At all. It can probably be a little bit annoying sometimes. I apologize for that. But these three areas are three places I know that I am constantly thinking about, constantly focusing on my life, my family, my work. What do I gotta do next? What's going on in my life? How's my family doing? How's my health? Where am I at? What's going on? I don't know half the time because my focus is being shifted in so many different places. <coughs> Sound familiar? That's not just me, is it? No, that's society today. That's society. So let's look at these three as individual things. First of all, life is a gift from God that each and every one of us have. <coughs> our life is going to consist of our personal needs. Now, oftentimes, these things, our own personal needs, our own personal life, might be our last concern. We might be looking to our work, we might be looking to our family, and a number of different things before we actually look at our own selves. I, I look around this room and I see people that don't usually put themselves first. I know, it, it, it's easy to think about that sometimes, is to say we always put ourselves first, but, but do you? Think about the things that you don't have in your life that maybe you might want to have. Think about your health. When we think about our life, we're thinking about our health. Our health. Both physically and mentally. Mental health in today's day and age is something they're finding more and more things about. And it's something that we should really focus on sometimes, right? Think about, make sure that we are mentally okay and not to mention our physical health. What about besides health? Our interests. We talk about our personal needs and our personal life. We talk about our interests. Maybe it's sports. Maybe it's quilting. Maybe it's going out with friends. What are your interests? And when we really think about these things that we know that we oftentimes put on the back burner, wouldn't we like more of it? Wouldn't you like to have more me time? Time that I can do the things that I want to do. I want to go to basketball games. I want to go to baseball games. I, I want to go play sports. I, I want to do the things that just I want to do. Oftentimes we find ourselves in that spot though, but we often put that at the back burner too. Right? Next we're going to look at family. Do you ever focus on family? Yeah, right? Of course. Of course we can put our focus on family a lot of times. These are now responsibilities. These are important things. Family is a gift from God. Just like life, family is a gift from God. Now, there are different stages. You go through different stages in life as a family. You have a child, uh, you're a mother, you have a mom, a dad, a grandma, and then eventually you get married, you have a spouse, and then you have kids of your own, and eventually grandkids of your own. There are different stages of this, but the fact is, we know that we have responsibilities with this. These are now responsibility. With our family, we have to love, we have to teach, Maybe it's a little bit of spoiling going on, too. That's what we do. And we focus on that. Life and our family. And finally, work. Work is a gift from God. 
That's right. That's right, it is. And maybe you're thinking, you know what? If I win the bajillion dollar mega lottery, I'm not going to ever have to work again. But that's not true. That's not true. Yes, you will have responsibilities involving your now responsibilities of work every single day of your life. Every single day of your life, you have the responsibility to work. Now, let's keep it real, though. Work is going to be, uh, give us an opportunity to provide for our family. Income, if you will. And maybe you just said, well, Brother Mikey, I'm retired. Okay, but you know what? You've, you've earned that right because of your work. Your career. That could be an, a now responsibility that we often find ourselves focused on. But even if you don't work anymore, even if you're already retired, we still have the responsibility to work because it's not about us. It's about serving God. So we're going to serve. We're going to do whatever our abilities allow us to do. Oftentimes, people, you're going to stay busy. And I was talking to, to somebody this week. I'm not going to say who. I was talking to somebody this week to talk about the retirement that they went through. And how they didn't necessarily want to retire. But it was time. And now they had to find a way to stay busy and be active and do things and work and serve God. Because that's something that we need to be doing every single day, whether you're retired or whether you're not. Whether you're a, a, a teenager and you haven't got your first job, or whether you're only a few weeks away from retirement, or whether you just retired this week, congratulations, Steve Bree. Congratulations. You earned it, buddy. Congratulations. These three things, though, these three things, our life, our family, and our work, these are things that oftentimes we find our, our focus torn from these three things. We've got to learn how to manage and how to be efficient with each one. Well, there's only one way to do that, and that is to focus on our daily provider. How are we going to focus on our daily needs? Well, first of all, family, life, and work are all very important now responsibilities, but those things should all be underneath our main focus, which is on our daily provider, on God. Luke chapter 12, verse 29 to 31 says this, Do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek His kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Think about that. See, let's never mistake the fact that God knows our daily needs. He knows them. And so there's only really one way to get away from multi-focused type life. And that is to not focus on the need, but instead focus on the provider. Everyone has these needs. Everybody. You're not unique in that. I'm not unique in that. We've all got these needs. We've all got these now responsibilities of life and family and work. We have different levels of them, sure. Sure. But we've got to change our focus from the gift to the giver. Remember what we say about life and family and work? Those are all gifts from God. You have ability, you have people in your life, and you've got life. Those are gifts from God. So let, instead of focusing on those gifts, let's focus on the giver. What would God have me do? What kind of example would he have me set? What kind of a Christian person does he want me to be when I face my now responsibilities every single day of my life? I can tell you this, though, for a fact. When it comes to our life, our family, and our work, we are better served. We are better prepared with these responsibilities. We are in better shape with these responsibilities, these now responsibilities, when we focus first on our daily provider. If you put God first in your life, you're going to find that your life, your family, and your work are all going to improve. I promise you they will. But those three things, that life, the family, and the work, oftentimes we find ourselves not just focusing on them, but we also find ourselves allowing stress to come into our lives. Stress, something that we talk about often, with our faith, with our lives, with our Christian walk, and staying on that path of righteousness, stress can come in, and it can be sneaky, and you can be stressed out before you even realize it. And if you ever say to me, uh, Brother Mikey, I've never dealt with stress in my life, I'm going to say, God bless you, because that is a blessing for you. And hold on to it tightly, and don't allow it to be there for you anymore. What about this daily stress, though? James 4, 14 through 16, some of my favorite verses. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. 
What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Now think about that for a second. We oftentimes worry about tomorrow. We oftentimes worry about what we're going to do next and allow our focus to be shifting all over the place. But really, we don't have to. We're not in the spot as Christians, as people who trust in God, who really have to. Have to. Because we know that we, we have to understand our lives are short. But that's why our lives are short lives. It is so important that we trust in God during this time because by trusting in Him now, boy, He's going to have our backs forever. And there's nothing better than that. There's nothing more reassuring than that. But our focus sometimes, it becomes a tunnel vision. Where, where all we might see is my now responsibilities, the things I have to do for my own life, the things I have to do for my family, the things I have to do for work, and we tend to forget about the things of the Lord. That tunnel vision can be dangerous for us. That tunnel vision can make our stress even worse. And we've all done it. I think that we're all guilty of it. And if you want to say that you're not, then maybe you can say, I know someone who suffers from allowing themselves to be overstressed. To allowing their life to be out of balance. That life, that family, and that work, if you focus on one over the other, oftentimes you're going to find yourself out of balance. That's why we got to have God at the top of it. We can find ourselves with that stress here and now of not seeing the whole picture. And forgetting that tunnel vision that makes us think about right now, our life here on earth, it can make us forget the whole eternal picture, if you will. So what's going to cause this daily stress and this tunnel vision? Fear, obsession, failure, sin, disappointment. The list can go on and on with things that can really cause us that stress. It's disability, disabilitating, and it's a focus problem. So just like before, when we were talking about our daily needs, let's instead of focusing on that stress, focusing on the thing that's causing us that stress, let's instead focus on our daily provider. Let's focus on God. Psalm 57, 1 through 6. Now, before I read this, let's understand that this is David hiding in a cave because Saul's after him. David says, Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for I in you, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts and men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. What is David saying here? He's saying my focus, wherever it might, could easily be, his focus is on God. And he's going to make it through this event in his life. And what is he saying? Despite everything that's happening... Despite all these things that he's facing, despite all these things that cause us stress, he says, be exalted. Be exalted, oh God. Can we praise God no matter what happens in our lives? I think that we can, and I think that we should, no matter how bad things may seem. No matter how upset we may get, no matter how stressed out, no matter how much things don't go our way. We've got to be able to look to God and say, be exalted. Be exalted. Because he is the one that has gifted us life and family and work. He is the one that has gifted us his son. That we can have redemption. Redemption. Here's why we shouldn't have stress. God knows our fears. He knows our obsessions, our failures, our sins, our disappointments. But yet God is still not far removed. This is why we should focus on God. 
Because as Christians, we don't have to have that daily stress. I know that's really easy to say, isn't it? But think about it. Just bear with me for a second. As Christians, we don't have to have that daily stress. Our faith and the assurance we receive, the assurance we receive through believing, repenting, the death, burial, and resurrection that is baptism, receiving forgiveness in the Holy Spirit, it also gives us a reason to never, ever, ever have stress. That's right. Faith can help us be pretty laid-back people when you think about it. I mean, we, we've got nothing to worry about, y'all, because with God in our lives, with Christ in our heart, we're going to a better place. Now, let's talk about that laid-back, though. Because this is not a, a lazy laid-back. Like, now I have the Lord, so now I can go do whatever I want. I can sit at home, and I can rest and do nothing and not work anymore. No, because now that we have the Lord in our heart, we can be laid back, but we better understand our responsibility to live that life and be everyday Christians every day and to tell people about the Lord. We are very active with an urgent message type of laid back. And you know what? I think we need to grasp that responsibility. I think we need to own it. And I think we need to truck for it every single day of our lives, knowing that because we have no stress, because we have the Lord in our heart, we better be sharing that. Amen. Why do we want to look at our brothers and our sisters and our neighbors and our friends and see all the stress and the, and the hatred and the concern and worry that they have in their lives whenever we can help them alleviate that by telling them about the Lord, the one who takes our stress away. Now, does that mean that, of course, of course it doesn't mean that we're not going to ever suffer from stress. We will. But folks, whenever you have that stress in your life, hit your knees and pray and say, Lord, take this from me. Cast your cares upon Him. He will take them from you. I promise you, He will. Let's patiently wait on Him because He is going to show us the way. He's going to show us the direction that we need to take. Let's focus on God. Let's trust Him. Let's rely on Him. And remember that it's not about me. It's about God. Even your stress is not about you, because that's something that you can give to Him. So in conclusion today, let's keep your priorities straight. I think that's one of the most important things that we can do in our lives, quite honestly. And as I prepared this sermon this week, it just hit home so much more and more every single day. My priorities. Because folks, if God's not your number one priority, He should be. He should be. Psalm 57, 7 through 11. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Does that make the psalm come to anybody's head? It does mine too. We've got to know that the Father deserves daily praise. Every single day we need to be able to say, be exalted, O oh God. The only way that we can truly be everyday Christians every day is to give Him daily praise. So are you? And if not, what can you do to improve it? I think no matter what happens, we must, we must give God the praise. We give Him the glory. With a steadfast heart, we're going to sing His praise. And I think, again, one of the best ways to do that is to focus on the provider. Focus on the giver. Focus on Him. Focus on the purpose that He gives us to serve Him, to trust Him, and to obey Him. Would you please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this time we have together. I ask, Lord, that you will help us to get focused about serving you. We know, Lord, that stress and our, our daily now responsibilities, we know that oftentimes, Lord, that they can be distracting. <clears throat> thank you for being patient with us in that. Lord, help us to recognize that putting you first in our lives and making you our focus will improve every aspect. Help us, Lord, to be everyday Christians every single day by praising your name and exalting you. Lord, we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our hymn of...